Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the May ERM Toolbox webinar. A couple of housekeeping notes before, you get, before we get started today. If you dialed in by phone but haven't logged in by web and you'd like to see the slides that will be shown today, please point your web browser to VediTalk.com. In the box where it says Participant, Join a Meeting, enter the same access code that you use to join the call, 987-9821. Uh, please stay aware of the level of background noise in your area as we are leaving the phone lines open and unmuted for questions. Uh, if it becomes noisy in your area, please put your phone on mute. And if your phone handset doesn't have a mute control, you can use the ReadyTalk controls to do so. Star 6 to mute and star 7 to unmute. If you're called away from your phone, please don't put the phone on hold because that will transmit your hold music to everybody on the call. Uh, you can simply hang up, dial back in when you're available, and it won't disrupt the call. We are leaving the phone lines open, as I mentioned. Also, the chat box is available in the lower left corner of your screen. If you have any questions, uh, comments, or otherwise, please feel free to type them there. I'll be monitoring that, and we'll relay questions to our presenter, Erike, uh, at appropriate pauses. With that, I will hand the controls over to our presenter today, Erike Young. Erike? Great. Thank you. Well, welcome, everyone. Well, uh, for those that, that when you first registered, um, I, I appreciate that uh, Emily found a picture from my high school days, I think, uh, that we had in our, there, uh, in our, in our photo album somehow. So uh, I wish I still looked that young, at least uh, in that original photo. So uh, today's webinar is um, we're going to be focusing on the importance of professional development in implementing an ERM program. And I think most of us recognize the challenge uh, with implementing ERM is, is also it's part of the change management. And, and I think we've, uh, other webinars or in the past, we've talked about ERM is as much about change management uh, as it is about anything else. And in order to do that, we need to have people with uh, better knowledge of, of risk management practices and, and how we move forward. And so uh, today we're going to focus a little bit on that and talk about some of the efforts that uh, you know, UC is doing um, as part of that effort, that whether a person's an employee of the university or even outside, how they can take advantage of those resources. So first I'd like to start off with is that um, a job description for an EHS manager. And um, some people may have seen uh, where I've done something similar to this uh, with uh, having the job description. And this job description actually came from the University of Texas. Uh, I pulled it off uh, probably about a year ago. It actually describes um, what I think most people would uh, say what an EHS manager's job is uh, or perceived to be. And, uh, you know, I'll just read it quickly. Provide professional knowledge and expertise in the administration and support of environmental health and safety programs responsible for the overall coordination and implementation of EHS programs to ensure compliance with regulatory agency guidelines and institutional policies. Now, I've always had a problem with this type of job description, and it's mainly because it's singular focused. It's very siloed that the job is compliant. And, I, and part of the problem is that most eh &S people view this as being their job, which makes it a challenge. And if you think about most other positions, that people may have, they, they describe themselves um, uh, in many ways with these type of terms. And so the example I'd like to try to give is how do people view things from a different paradigm? Um, and first I'll take it from a uh, eh &S perspective. Um, and this is a Cal OSHA regulation that deals with fire extinguishers. And uh, for most eh &S professionals, um, we write this up every day as a violation. Um, it's a common thing, and what the requirement is, is that uh, as an empl the employers are responsible uh, for inspection and maintenance of all portable fire extinguishers, and the specific requirement is shall be visually inspected monthly. And, um, and like I said, well, you rarely do we see this. On some campuses we, we see it better than others, uh, but almost in any uh, work environment this is something that uh, is a common violation that most people would see. Now, if I take this view from a risk manager uh, point of view, um, you, you might view this a little different. And so this is where I go from a compliance-based or risk-based perspective. And so uh, being that, uh, you know, I'm a certified safety professional as well as, uh, you know, I've taken the ARM, so I have a little dual perspective in this. And if I'm a, um, as a risk manager, I first think about, okay, what's the probability of failure of a fire extinguisher? Okay, it's probably pretty small. 
if I read the text a little bit further, it says, you know, the travel distance to any extinguisher has to be less 75 feet or less. So if one fails, there's another one 75 feet away. Um, and then the other perspective I might think of, okay, let's say we do get cited. What's the fine? Most likely it's probably about a $350 to $500 fine OSHA is probably going to cite. Um, and then the other perspective I'll, I'll keep in mind would be is where the fire extinguisher is being inspected. Or is it a sprinkler building? Is it an office building where the likelihood of fire might be less compared to a, a lab or research environment or industrial environment? Um, and so you start thinking this from a risk perspective. And the last thing is, if there was a fire, do I really want employees fighting the fire? Uh, most likely I want them to probably get out as quickly as possible, uh, depending on the circumstance. And you can kind of see, so from a, from a compliance base, yeah, we might be, you know, um, you know have a, a citation. But when we put things in from a risk perspective, and how do we train people to think from a risk perspective? Um, to do that, and that's really where, you know, that professional development and, and really trying to get people to see things from an ERM perspective. Now, for clarification, uh, because the fire marshals I know get upset with me when I put this up, that the, um, I'm not saying we're not going to inspect fire extinguishers. What I'm trying to say is that there's a risk with all the different compliance. There's, pro you know, probably over 5,000 OSHA regulations. And in the mix of things, we have to make a determination of, you know, what's most important. And so maybe on a monthly basis, they may not get inspected. Maybe it's every two months because of a resource issue. Um, or, you know, maybe because it's a laboratory, we want them inspected every week. So just because the reg says one thing, I think the whole point of this is looking from a risk perspective of what's the likelihood, what's the result of, of not doing something. And then I also put in perspective when I think about this is ergonomics. You know, um, if we had a person that, um, you know, from a making, looking from a resource standpoint, you know, we've seen that ergonomics can save an organization a substantial, you know, three to one return on investment. Whereas fire extinguishers, again, with sprinklers and all that, what's the, you know, are, are we over controlling um, uh, or uh, poorly controlling or, or certain areas? And that has to be put in that perspective too. So with that in mind, I kind of changed. I, I took that the original job description that you saw in the beginning and I put it more from an ERM perspective. And so what, how is that different? So if it was a risk-based job summary, whereas before you saw compliance was very, it was based on regulatory compliance, what this position, would, or at least what I think my position does, is to provide professional knowledge and expertise in the administration, integration, and support of environment, health, and safety programs at all levels of the organization. So key there is integration, providing support, in coordination with the risk manager, develops environmental health and safety programs that reduce hazard, operational, strategic, reputational, and compliance risks in support of the strategic objectives and mission of the organization. So I think all of us recognize that we just identified all the ERM type of risks that are out there. And it's all in support of the strategic risks and working with the risk manager to really help prioritize those things. Again, the challenge is, is that's all well and good. I can put that in a job description. Well, how are we going to support that through professional development? How do we make that, that linkage uh, to, to, to go to that next level? So one of the things, of course, you, it's common, we, we've all say, is you know, enterprise risk management is we believe that everyone is a risk manager. One of the things that I've always believed um, is that the best safety professionals understand risk management and the best risk managers understand safety. When I look at organizations that have either the risk manager has a safety background or the safety manager has a risk management background, I usually find that those organizations are probably one of the best ran organizations that, uh, because they really understand you know, how the financing works, how the, the risk transfer, how we can avoid risk, those type of things, because they have that common understanding. Now, most of the time in risk management, traditional risk is based obviously on hazard risk. So we have to take it to that next level of, how do we get people to understand more from an ERM perspective? And when I look at ERM, it's essentially the marriage of the two disciplines. Um, it requires collaboration between risk and safety and identifying a broad array of risk. And again, it's support of the organization's strategic plan and mission. And again, that's why it's so key. I always mention the strategic plan and mission because that's what this is all about. That's what we work for. It's not to work for compliance. It's towards the organizational objectives in that regard. So if we do a traditional professional development model and we think of how we would support someone to do, uh, you know, to, to get that education, 
I just used a, you know, a conservative example of, you know, if we send someone to a three-day conference and uh, they have a, you know, of course we have a general session and then we have some breakout sessions that are maybe only 50 minutes to an hour long. Uh, the airfare cost, you know, so the registration 650, airfare 400, you know, hotel, again, conservative uh, on that. The parking, food, by the time you tally it all up, because the lost productivity of flying there and back if it's far away, we're looking at $3,000. The issue is, is there really $3,000 in value, whether it be for the organization uh, or for the employee? Uh, in most cases, we come back and we say, oh, that was interesting, and um, we might, you know, is, is there much takeaways to bring back from the conference? Hopefully, if it's a good one, there might be something that we can take back to be able to implement. But in most cases, we get uh, maybe some CEUs to say that we attended a conference, um, and then, it, you know, that all the information collects dust on the shelf at some point, and maybe some later on we might revisit it. So we're really trying to propose a, a new model for professional development. And when we do that is how do we align professional development opportunities that are really, you know, with our mission, strategic plan, and ERM. So when we say that, it needs to create value for the organization, create value for the employees. And when I create, say create value, it's, um, it also it can be part of that, the professional certifications that I indicate on, on, on the um, slide there. So how are we going to do that? What we've, you probably heard at this year's Risk Summit, we have something called ERM University. And ERM University, I guess you can say, is a larger term for really what we're trying to do is how do we educate people and provide opportunities that, again, are in alignment with the mission and strategic plan and, and really with ERM. And underneath that, we'll talk a little about EHS Academy because, um, again, there's, there's certain uh, elements from an EHS perspective of how do we get those that are in the EHS environment or safety to, to learn more about uh, ERM from that standpoint. So ERM University um, was created by the Office of Risk Services uh, to provide professional development uh, opportunities in all things risk. So of course we're having our one day ERM University conference, uh, which will be starting actually well, we're only a week away now. Um, and so that's really our first, uh, what will be our first but hopefully many years of conducting the ERM University. The other part that we've done this last year, uh, our first sponsorship is that I teach the Associate Risk Management course our designation. And I teach those classes via webinar and also in person at UCOP offices. Um, with that webinar, um, and then we're also going to offer some other courses via webinar, but the goal is, is whether people decide that they want to pursue the ARM designation, it provides an opportunity to help educate um, people on risk management in general. The other thing that's also happened, uh, we are, UCOP is now an authorized testing site. Uh, for the ARM uh, materials as well as any other institute exams. We're also looking at uh, collaborating with UC Extensions, and we'll explain a little bit more about that. And again, part of that is also the EHS Academy, and we'll go into detail. So EHS Academy um, is a subset of ERM University, and you'll be hearing and seeing more about that uh, in the coming months. But the real intent is to help integrate safety and risk management operations. One of the things, we, we used to have the EHS Academy years ago, but again, I would say it was a two or three day conference where people got snippets of information and, and maybe not um, as you know, a much take, takeaways as they should. And so what we've aligned this to be is to really support three uh, common areas where we find deficiencies in, uh, in our safety programs. One is our EHS professionals. We should help build them up um, towards certifications, whether it be a certified safety professional, certified industrial hygienist or uh, to receive their associate risk management. Our department safety coordinators, they might become a safety trained supervisor as part of the certificate program. And then finally, we have um, a certified safety and health manager. So most of these things are actually recognized designations or certifications uh, by independent boards. And this goes to the value proposition, is that if I just do training for training sake, you know, it, it's not going to maybe take hold. Whereas if I see it as part of my professional growth and development, that it's something that I'm going to take along with me, I think there's a lot more opportunities for that. And you're going to see on the top part is that we have core modules that are going to be part of this new EHS Academy. And again, what we recognize is that we didn't do a very good job of training people on safety management systems. The university uh, back in October 2005 issued what we call the President's Policy on Health, Safety, and the Environment and included 
uh, guidelines for ISEM or integration, Integrated Safety Environmental Management Program. The problem was is we never provided any training to our campuses on what that looks like and how to implement. And so we're kind of going back to the drawing board a little bit and saying what could we do, how can we better support the EHS departments to implement, the department safety coordinators and those managers and supervisors. And so you see the core modules would be safety management systems, hazard inspection correction, uh, environmental management, and these would be, um, um, you know, again, everyone would have to take. UC Risk Summit would be a portion of that. And then we'd have elective modules that might be more on um, for PIs uh, that aren't, that's not included on here, some PI type training for laboratory management. Uh, we'll talk about physical hazards. So depending on the area that they're most involved with, there'll be some electives. And we'll actually, so it's kind of like going to college. You're going to have your core curriculum and then you're going to have your areas that are more for your major. And that's what we're really trying to align this with is to make it more productive and fruitful uh, for our, our employees. Now, part of that, um, you know, part of it is going to be the ARM designation that people can take as part of their electives. Uh, but separate, they can also just do that on their own. And one of the things I took off the website from the institutes that basically is the uh, governing body for the ARM designation, um, uh, what are the benefits from an organization standpoint? And I think most people know that, um, you know, the rating agencies are now looking um, to ERM and, and how organizations are implementing ERM as part of the rating criteria. So uh, hopefully the ERM and ER, ARM and ERM series will help prepare organizations for that. Uh, it will empower organizations to make better informed business decisions and optimize its risk management by aligning ERM with strategic goals, uh, position ERM program for success uh, by learning how to coach risk owners. Uh, and again, I think most of us, uh, from a campus perspective, it's how do we coach those risk owners to better understand their risk, as well as maybe they would take the ARM, uh, some ARM courses material as well. And again, more uh, how we communicate and consult more effectively with critical stakeholders. So those are the organizational benefits of you know, why we want, may want to promote an ARM or ERM type designation. From a personal level, um, what the institutes have recognized is that those that actually complete their ARM, about 75 percent, uh, see faster career progression. That, um, that the, the designation means something to their, you know, to the employer, to their managers and supervisors. Um, in some cases, they indicate that within two years, uh, most people receive a promotion or 70 percent do. Um, help them prepare for their job, more than 80 percent, and then 87 percent uh, attributed uh, uh, earning the designation with help prepare for long-term career goals. And so again, that's where we go to the organizational benefits as well as the employee benefits. Now, the challenge is, of course, when you provide training that we uh, may be providing a, a door for some people to leave um, to take on other opportunities. And that's always a risk that we do take, uh, and that's something that we have to recognize as part of this. But um, if we don't provide this type of training and avenues, then we're also just not going to have our organizations be, as, you know, have the optimal risk level as we probably could when we start looking at that. Now the ARM series, um, a couple of things, I, for, for those that have their ARM um, that received it probably, let's say, you know, more than two years ago, um, or even longer for, you know, 10 or 20 years ago, the ARM uh, program has gone through uh, major changes uh, over the last many years. Uh, for those that took it 20 years ago, it used to be a text or essay-based type of exam. Uh, then it moved to a multiple choice. Well, back in October of 2012, the, uh, the textbooks for all, the entire series completely changed. Um, and so ARM 54, 55, and 56, um, ARM 54 is about risk management principles and practices. The original text was on risk assessment. And what you'll find, and I have the people that are taking the course now, is that it's really focused on ERM. They completely, um, they don't really don't talk about hazard risk as much. And so it really aligns, it's a good, great introduction to ERM of how things, how do things interrelate. And the course of, that we've, we've put together actually on the, re, this Thursday will be our last class. It's a 10 week class in which we cover 11 chapters and you can see all the things that we covered on there. And all the, all the webinars are recorded and so people have access. We've had 185 plus people uh, that are enrolled in the course, um, all the way from Alaska and as far away from, as Denmark and Morocco are taking the class uh, via webinar. 
and um, as well as we have study groups in Montana, Montana Municipal Insurance Association, uh, as well as uh, Texas School Boards Association and some others are joining in and taking the class that way. ARIM 55 uh, is the next class which used to be risk control uh, and now that you're calling it risk assessment and treatment. And if you notice the language that they've changed to, it's using the language that we use in the ERM about risk assessment and treatment. It's not about controlling risks now, it's about treating them. And um, goes into root cause analysis, business continuity, intellectual property, reputation risk. So it's going through all the things that we've, we've now recognized. It's going away from the traditional hazard risk model, which I think makes the ARM even more valuable now. And so that class, which I'll be talking, uh, showing some slides a little bit later on as well, will actually begin July 18th, um, and the registration is open. It's free for all UC employees. <clears throat> it's $50 for non-UC employees to take the course. And then lastly, ARM 56 is risk financing. And this is probably the chapter that changed the least uh, because risk financing, under, even under ERM, is somewhat the same process. Um, and so. Um, but that one most likely will begin in October uh, later this year. We'll be offering that again uh, to all of our employees. And then lastly, I do want to mention the ERM 57 course, um, which is already, um, which has not changed. And I know that we have several people that have actually taking, uh, taken the ERM 57 uh, exam and passed it. And this is, uh, I see Saladin's on, on the call. So Saladin is one of the, the few brethren that actually has an ARME. Uh, as well as Gary Leonard. And so this exam is more, um, it's essay based or written based. It's not, I guess, better way to say it's not multiple choice. And the topics covered, um, uh, obviously you can see on the screen, but the challenge that we have for the most people that take the ERM 57, it is more financial uh, institution focused. And so uh, that does become a challenge for more people. Uh, the good news is that the new ARM course, I think, focused more on regular organization or non-financial to make it more relevant and as a good primer now for people that are looking to take the ERM 57. So <clears throat> um, the ERM courses through UC, ERM University, again this is part of the offering that we're looking to really develop a curriculum through the UC um, ERM University. And <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, all the courses are taught via webinar and they're recorded. And at, at this point we are uh, doing them on Thursday nights. Um, from 5.30 to 7 p.m., so they're only an hour and a half. Um, and we really cover the essential information and review what's the most important in those chapters. Um, and all the things on the left kind of repeat what I just said, but the cost of the course registration fee is $50 per course, but it's waived for UC employees. Um, we do actually offer, you know, again, the point of this is not necessarily uh, as, a, as a revenue generator, um, uh, but it's, it's the intent is to, um, to, to really get people to buy into it and to keep it low cost. So for, uh, if we have other people that are outside the UC system that they've decided to form a study group. And so with 10 people, to, uh, $250 as an organization. And so the buy-in is only $25 instead of 50. As well as for large association, they may want to sponsor like a, um, an ASSE chapter or RIMS chapter. And um, so it's only $10 per person when they do it that way. Um, the, the things we cannot control costs on are $120 for the textbook, which is through the institutes. Uh, the ERM textbook is $185, so a little bit more. Uh, the testing fee is the other cost that goes with it, is $165 to test at an OP location. And then if, depending on if you're late in the registration window, it can be as high as $250 at a Prometex testing center. Um, and so again, UCOP is an approved testing center. Our, um, our room is part of that. I do see a, a question from Amanda. Um, about the cost of the annual ARME renewal. Um, so the good news is with the ARM, um, with any of the designations, is there are no, uh, there are not any continuing education uh, fees that are part of that. Uh, with other, uh, you know, like a certified safety professional, you have to uh, demonstrate every five years continuing ed and turn that in. Once you have your ARM designation, there's not a, a requirement, uh, at least there has not been a requirement in the past. Uh, to have ongoing continuing education, which also makes it a nice designation um, as part of that. So uh, this is again why we're encouraging as much as we can uh, for campuses to uh, maybe form a, a study group. Uh, I know we have probably about 80 people signed up now in the current course that we have. 
Um, and the, the, probably the biggest hurdle has actually been buying the textbooks. And then hopefully the goal would be is once maybe these textbooks are maybe purchased by a department, uh, that they could be shared with others or do some other ways to, to keep costs down uh, to, to encourage people to continue um, along their, their professional development journey. The, uh, as far as access, I wanted to also just show um, one of the things that we've, we've put together. So this is a, a screenshot from, the, um, from the, the website that I host, which is the, which basically is called the ARM Study Group, nothing fancy. And uh, what people can do is once the recordings are up, they have access uh, to but sort of by week the webinar recording. They can either download the link. Uh, so they can view it on their iPhone, iPhone or uh, iPad. So if they're traveling and there's no Internet access, uh, they can basically watch it uh, during their viewing pleasure. As well as we provide a YouTube link um, that is part of that as well. Um, uh, real quick story on that is that uh, Grace's daughter ended up taking the, the course as well. And while in England, she kept on saying she heard my voice uh, the whole time. And the reason why is that she was, her daughter was in the back uh, basically listening uh, to the recordings as she was pursuing our ARM uh, designation. So uh, again, all the materials, the questions and answers, PowerPoints, all that are supported as part of this in this uh, course that we try to do. And then uh, as far as the 55 course, um, again, one of the reasons why we put this uh, time, this webinar right now was with the idea that Risk Summit's coming up and also that we want to encourage people to register for uh, the, the ARM 55 or to encourage their employees or others to uh, pursue that. And so again, July 18th is we'll, be, we'll begin ARM 55. It's 11 chapters um, that we'll be covering, plus we do a course review, uh, which is the uh, last session. And we do that all in 10 weeks. So some chapters uh, are relatively small, um, and we can co cover two chapters in one setting. And so we try to uh, group that in. Um, there are a couple weeks because of either uh, other work commitments uh, that I need to, that I cannot uh, host it. So basically in about uh, October 3rd is probably when I believe we're going to end, uh, which is a little bit more than 10 weeks, but it's because we take a break uh, in, uh, during class time to do that. And it also gives people a chance to catch up. And again, the topics covered for ARM 55 are listed on the right. For those that are interested in registering, uh, we did put the, the link on there. You can register uh, directly uh, by just copying the, that link, or, or you can go to the ARM study group. If you just Google that, it should be the first thing that uh, pops up. And you'll see the link also on that page to register now. Uh, for UC employees, please put in um, your campus location. And I should also be able to identify you by your email address, and that way we can make sure that your fee is waived, as well as um, be able to help for your risk manager or others, they know how many people are attending from your location. Um, and then lastly, uh, we just want to cover, again, relatively quick toolbox talk on this, but uh, uh, ERM University is coming, um, and Risk Summit is next week, June 5th through the 7th. I believe registration is now closed. Um, unless you, uh, for someone that has not registered and they really, really want to go, um, we might be able to squeeze you in. We have, I believe, 1,062 registrants this year. Uh, last year, I believe our, our, our attendance was 805. Uh, so we, uh, again, uh, set a record. We have about uh, 50 people attending ERM University uh, that are um, mainly outside of, outside of the, uh, the uh, university system. And then, uh, on the ARM series, I actually do see a message uh, from Jennifer. Any plans to offer ARM 57? Uh, so, uh, or actually would be ERM 57. It's part of the designation. At this point, I, I probably will after I go through the 56. I'll redo the 57. Uh, typically, I try, once the, the, the text is, or until the textbook changes or the exam changes, I typically don't um, redo the classes, mainly because the webinars have been proven pretty effective for people to study from. Um, the, I guess the other point I've had, we've, I've actually had about 10,000 downloads of, of the webinar material. Um, and I get regular emails of people, um, uh, you know, saying that the, it was because of the webinars that they were able to pass the class. So, and most of those are from the recordings. Um, so the ERM57 material is currently up on the web at armstudygroup.org, uh, I think it is. And you should be able to find, um, find that information. 
So once again, ARM series, April, or excuse me, uh, July 18th, and then also EHS Academy. More information will be coming soon in the, uh, and probably the next several months on that. So uh, again, the main point was to help uh, discuss a little bit about professional development opportunities. And the one slide I think that got missed out of here is that, um, or I forgot to put in, was uh, the difference between training and professional development. Um, I think I must have skipped over, but one of the, the challenges that we've had or discussed of why we did ERM University is that when you look at what a training class is, you know, you know difference, you might have the same instructor, you have the same, you know, information that's being covered. But one of the reasons why we're, we're going to be doing some work with the extensions is because it's now considered professional development because, it, you know, it's not the training department doing the training. And for whatever reason, that makes a huge, huge difference uh, when, we, when we provide this training. So we're trying to make this training both at ERM University as well as through EHS Academy um, more relevant. Um, and more be seen as professional development because they either can get CEUs credited through uh, the extension or uh, they can lead to a certification. And so we've been working actually at this point very closely with UC Davis extension and making that happen. And uh, at least we have a, a verbal agreement on how we're making, making that work. So with that, I'd open it up to uh, any questions that people may have about uh, either uh, ERM University or the ARM courses. Silence. So, uh, with that, Emily, I'll let All you. Right. Okay. Thanks very much, Erect. Um, I can put in a personal testimonial for the classes. I'm taking the first one now and finding it incredibly useful and a whole lot of information to try to get in. So, um, thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you at future ERM Toolbox webinars. Thank you. Thank you.